Welcome to this video on pH calculations. In this video, we're going to be looking at the effect of diluting uh, solutions containing strong bases. So that's alkalized like sodium and potassium hydroxide. So let's begin just thinking intuitively. We imagine we have a solution of pH 13. So it's a strongly alkaline pH. Uh, what's going to happen if we dilute that solution 10 times? Now, if we had an acidic solution up here, something like pH 1, uh, then in previous videos we've shown that if you dilute that by 10 times, uh, then that is going to cause the pH to increase by one unit because the H plus concentration uh, is going to be 10 times lower um, and as a result of that the pH is going to be one unit up. And watch previous videos if you'd like to see that. Now is that the case with the alkaline solution? Is it the case that as you uh, dilute this solution 10 times you will also go up to pH 14? Well, hopefully you can, you, a little bit of thinking will, will make you realise that that cannot possibly be the case. Um, because if that were the case, then what that would mean is that if we dilute a solution, we're actually making it more alkaline. So it can't possibly uh, increase. In fact, we much more expect that it's much more likely to actually decrease. Um, and the reason for that is because eventually if you keep on diluting any solution, it's going to tend towards the pH value of water. So we're expecting here that actually it's going to go down. It's going to decrease towards a pH of 7 because it's going to become like water. So can we actually show exactly how it is going to change? And we're going to begin by thinking about a solution which has got a pH value of 13. Now you can work out the H plus concentration uh, in such a solution. Um, just by inverting the Sorensen uh, pH definition relationship. We find out that that is our pH. Now I'm just going to leave the units off. This will be moles per decimeter cubed. Now we can also work out uh, the OH minus concentration because we know that the ionic product of water, uh, which is the product of the H plus concentration and the OH minus concentration, should take a value of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Um, that's small squared decimeters to the minus six, at least at 298 Kelvin, which is what we're operating at. So um, we can actually use that to work out the fact that the concentration of OH minus is just going to be Kw divided by the concentration of H plus, uh, which in this case is going to come out at 0 0.1 uh, moles, again, moles per decimeter cubed. Now imagine that we are diluting this uh, solution 10 times. Now what happens there uh, is that all concentrations are divided by 10, the dilution factor. So the H plus concentration is now uh, no longer 10 to the minus 13, uh, but the H plus concentration has now gone down to uh, 0, 10 to the power minus 14, uh, and the OH minus concentration uh, is going to be 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cubed. Now there is a problem here. Um, if we work out our product of the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus, uh, then we find out that our value is going to be 10 to the minus 14 uh, for the H plus. Um, and then if we multiply that by the OH minus concentration, I'll just use blue for... OH minus just to be a little bit clearer. Make that 0 0.01. Then what we find there is that actually this value turns out to be 10 to the power minus 16. And that is a big problem because we've said that if we're in any sort of equilibrium situation, then H plus times OH minus of the concentration should be. Um, 10 to the minus 14 instead. So the problem here uh, is that this is not the Kw value. And that implies that we're not at equilibrium. And whenever you're not at equilibrium, the system's going to adjust itself in order to restore equilibrium. So what's going to happen is the concentrations are going to change. to restore products of H plus and OH minus concentrations equals Kw. 
Now, how can that actually happen? Well, the way it's going to happen is that water molecules are going to start to actually be two waters reacting with each other, but in this sort of simplified representation, water molecules are going to start to dissociate to form H plus and OH minus. And as they do, the concentration of H plus is going to slightly increase, and also the concentration of OH minus is going to start to increase. And it turns out that they don't need to increase by very much. Um, and once you have an increase, so uh, it turns out the increase uh, increase is very, very small, is only uh, an increase of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per decimeter cubed. Um, and then it turns out that if you actually apply that, um, what you find is that if you add that number to 10 to the minus 14, the H plus concentration is now actually 10 to the minus 12 moles per decimeter cubed. And the OH minus concentration, uh, if we do uh, the sum, actually turns out to be a very interesting value. So we've got 0 0.01, but now we need a lot of zeros. So there's going to be 12 digits here, 9, 12 digits, and then comes a 99. Nine. So that is the OH minus concentration in moles per decimeter cube. Now, to all intents and purposes, that is 0 0.01. So if we just take a step back from this, what has actually happened here um, is the H plus concentration has changed. It's changed exactly the same quantity as the OH minus concentration. But because the H plus concentration was very, very small to start with, this tiny increase has actually changed it by two orders of magnitude. Um, whereas in the case of the OH minus concentration, it's barely changed at all. So let's summarize. So the solution of pH 13 is diluted 10 times. What is the new pH uh, that's going to come about? Well, at pH 13, we started with an H plus concentration of 10 to the minus 13 and OH minus of 0 0.1. Now, we've diluted the solution and we found out that by the end of all the rejiggling of itself and a restoration of equilibrium, we've got an OH minus concentration which has decreased. The concentration of OH minus drops by... 10 times. So we've diluted our solution 10 times. OH minus concentration has decreased by 10 times. Our H plus concentration has actually increased by 10 times. So H plus has actually gone up by a magnet order of 10. Now, if we stick that in this pH relationship here, we actually find that the new pH of our solution is actually pH 12. So in other words, if we stick it on here, we start with a solution of pH 13 and we dilute 10 times, we actually find our pH drops by one unit. So 10 times dilution means pH decreases by one unit. So it's in fact the exact opposite to what happens when you do dilute an acidic solution. Right, let's do a couple of examples to see how that's actually going to work out in practice. So uh, imagine here we're looking for how does the pH change if a solution of one mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide uh, is diluted by a thousand times. So this time it's a thousand times dilution or uh, 10 to the power 3 which is 10 times 10 times 10 times. So let's see uh, how that's actually going to work out. Uh, so the way we're going to do these is a sort of three-step procedure. Here are my stepping stones. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the effect on my OH minus concentration. So the concentration of OH minus after dilution, we start off at one mole per decimeter cubed. We're diluting by a thousand times. So our concentration is going to decrease by a factor of a thousand. 
So we're going to get a new OH minus concentration uh, of uh, 10 to the power minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. So now to work out the effect on the H plus concentration, uh, we are going to use this formula here. So the H plus concentration is going to be 10 to the power minus 14, which is the Kw value, divided by our concentration of um, OH minus, and that's going to give me a value of 10 to the minus 11 moles per decimeter cubed. So with that being the case, we can then use this Sorensen relationship here, and we find that pH is 11. Now the original pH of, of this solution here uh, that we would have had uh, was pH 14. And you can get that just by um, doing a very similar calculation but taking this value to be 1 instead. Um, and so unsurprisingly perhaps uh, we've seen here that we've got dilution by 10 to the power 3 times leads to decrease in pH by 3 units. So we can see a 3 unit pH change from a 10 to the power 3 times dilution. Remember, a decrease in pH. Here's a bit more of a difficult example, so perhaps pause the video and try and see if you can work it out. So it's the same steps. Uh, we need to work out uh, the concentration of OH minus um, before and after dilution. So we can start off just by working out the initial OH minus concentration, which is 5. Um, and we're using 25 centimetres cubed of solution and diluting it down uh, to 1,000 centimetres cubed. So uh, we need to be a little bit careful here about how we work out the concentration of uh, hydroxide after dilution. Um, and the way we can do that is just by working out the number of moles uh, of OH minus. This is a fully dissociated strong base, so we can just use concentration times volume. In this case, it's 5, and the volume is 25, and then we turn to decimeters cubed by doing 5 times uh, 25, that's 10 to the minus 3. Um, and if we work that out, uh, we find it's 5, turns out to be 0 0.125 moles. Now if we want to then work out the concentration of OH minus, and I'll just do it in blue like I did on the other slide for the diluted concentration of OH minus, uh, we need to do the number of moles of OH minus divided by the total volume uh, that we're now working in. So we've got a value of 0 0.125 for the moles and the total volume we said was a thousand centimeters cubed. So if we write that in decimeters cubed it's just one uh, decimeter cubed. Um, and so we're going to get a final answer here of concentration of OH minus at 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed. So once we've worked that out, we can then work out the, OH, the H plus concentration, uh, which turns out to be H plus concentration of uh, 10 to the power minus 14 divided by uh, 0.125 using the KW relationship. Um, and that gives us a value of 8 times 10 to the minus 14 moles per decimeter cubed. And finally, uh, to get the new pH, uh, we're going to just stick it in the Sorensen relationship. Minus log base 10 of that number there uh, turns out to be 13.10 to 2 dp. And that's how you work out the, con uh, the pH values of strong bases when they are diluted. This same method every time. First you work out the effect on the OH minus concentration, then you use that to work out the effect on the H plus concentration using Kw, and finally you work out the pH from the H plus concentration.